So as you, as you know, if you want to blame anyone, just blame Marvin. Because he gave me the idea. I, I had no clue how I could do a talk at the VIEW conference. And then he said, like, maybe you can try to use um, Angular and then migrate that uh, to VIEW. So that's an interesting um, idea. And I said, like, yeah, OK, yes, I'll do it. Now I regret it. OK. So I'm a Google developer expert. My uh, uh, expertise is in Angular. But I've been using React the last couple of, week, uh, of weeks, no, <laughs> couple of years, sorry, <laughs> because I'm also um, using GraphQL. And I realized that nobody cared in the Angular community about GraphQL. So I moved into React, started doing some prototypes, and then, um, and then I did some talks at conferences. So I'm using now Angular and React, and just recently, heard about Vue and got excited about it, and I wanted to learn, and doing a talk is a good excuse for learning. So here I am. I do quite a lot of talks. These are mainly Angular, um, and uh, some less of them, like maybe four or five in React. And you can see that I do a lot of talks. I mean, this, this data is from the last two years, so this is more or less like a little bit of three, three, four uh, talks per month, which is a lot of talks. One thing that I like to show, I'm also a blogger, and I hope you also enjoy blogging. And this is a moment when I publish my blogs, and this goes to, the, to this publication in Medium. And they have this feature, blog post. And when you get one of your blog posts there, it's like, yes, yes. And then after, I don't know, two years, I got three of my posts there. So it was a good moment for me. I like to show it. There are more or less like 400 GDEs, so it's quite a, a big achievement. I also, I'm also a trainer. And this week, I was doing a GraphQL full stack training using React. That was two days ago. Um, because I do a lot of events, last year I thought, OK, maybe I should run one of these events. And I got this idea of where would be a cool place to run an event. I mean, this is a, an amazing menu. But what could be spectacular? And then I thought, why not do a conference in a cruise? And uh, actually, I convinced some uh, poor people, and uh, they got really stressed <laughs> because of me. But then we ran this conference. This is the first Angular conference that was happening during a cruise. Uh, it departed from Miami and go around the Bahamas for a week. OK, this happened last year. So um, I can show you some pictures. I mean, this is not fantasy. This is, is not Photoshop. It's, uh, it actually happened. <laughs> I mean, I'm giving you some ideas because Vue is starting. You can, you, know, you can start thinking about how to organize this. <laughs> this is a proper cruise. This is not a, you know, some boat. No, no, this is a proper cruise. And we did trainings, talks, but I mean, nobody was interested in the talks. <laughs> Everybody was for the cruise. That was the whole point. Like, how can I go to a conference and also go on holidays? <laughs> so, yeah, OK, that's enough for an intro, I guess. So before we get into any, you know, any discussions or uh, you know, the fire going on and sparkles and everything, I mean, I love any framework. I don't mind. I mean, even if you use your own framework, just keep doing it. I mean, don't, don't listen to the other people. Um, I understand that some people is really in love with their framework, but I don't understand the people that is against all the frameworks. So please don't do that. And I'm going to put this very close, like almost you know, making a selfie in this slide. OK, so I'm going to start. I mean, this is more or less my journey, because obviously I, I had no clue about Vue um, just a few weeks ago. So I had to do some uh, research. And I think the best is just doing a timeline, like what was happening when Vue was created. So because I'm coming from an Angular background, I'm going to start with some Angular uh, story. So Angular was um, released in, um, in, 
2009, and the most you know, the most known feature was this two-way data binding. Everyone remembers that, you know, the input and then some test, and it's like, wow, that was amazing at the time. I mean, imagine if you show that today. Then, some years later, we got the first release of React, which is, uh, you know, is quite an um, important framework today. And the basic idea behind it is that that was a uh, focus on the view and also giving the idea of uh, components, which became like really popular after that. They didn't stop there. The next year they released React Native, which is possibly the, you know, the leader on um, native, uh, building native mobile apps still today. That's the same year that Vue was released. So that's something to remember. And it, I think the idea from Vue that I got from uh, Evan Yu is that it's progressive in a way that the learning curve is, you know, is going progressively with you as you need more features or you need more um, complex um, solutions. And I think it's, it's, a really, it's a really good idea. The last thing that you want is to spend three days trying out some proof of concept and then realize that it's not the tool that you, that you need. 2015, we get Polymer. And there was a talk yesterday, if you, if you were here yesterday, Tim did a great job explaining the new features that Web Components are bringing to the table. And it seems, I mean, Web Components have been around for a while, but now it seems that it's going to happen very soon. We will get Firefox, maybe Edge, uh, they are considering. Uh, <laughs> well, we know, we know web browsers. Um, but that's a very interesting technology, and there's a lot of uh, interest in Angular, and I can see the same interest in React and probably Vue as well. Um, people trying to build these web components from different uh, frameworks. This is also the year when the first release of Vue uh, happens, and then we can see some of these features. I mean, I, I read the, the log in uh, GitHub, and this, uh, this is also from the, the, v, the Vue website. So it seems like at this point it was ready for enterprise, so there were some uh, improvements on the tooling, so it could be um, useful for big, big projects, and there were also some improvements on the syntax. If you don't agree, you can tell me. <laughs> then there's uh, the release of Angular 2 in uh, 2016. And we also can see some other releases in Vue. Um, this time we have some performance improvements. You also, uh, Vue adopted Virtual DOM, like React. We get also scope um, slots. And something that it was new for me, Nobody care in Angular, which is streaming uh, server-side rendering. That sounds like cool. And then I realized that React also have it. So this is an interesting point. Sometimes you get just focus in one framework and don't realize that something cool is happening in another community. And um, I wouldn't recommend people to just look, you know, down at the floor. If you can look around a little bit and you know be open-minded, that would be cool. Then in 2017, we got more releases. It gets very confusing. I, I think nobody understands. I mean, I'm also from the Angular community. I don't understand all these new releases, like three, four, five. We, who knows what's the next one? And um, people is just looking, searching for uh, documentation examples. Is they just get a big mess um, from that. That's not happening with Vue. Vue is releasing more uh, versions. Uh, probably the most interesting is the latest, um, 2.5. Um, I'm very excited about seeing TypeScript support. That's something that it's, um, you know, it's very popular in Angular. So I can see a lot of Angular developers looking, looking at these uh, with good eyes. There's also some improvement in uh, server-side rendering. I mean, the project from Next, it looks, it looks really cool. We have something similar in Angular, but it's been, 
It was a separate project which was called uh, Angular Universal. Then they move it into the core, but it's still, still in development. It seems you have something much more solid. And another thing is the functional component. So I can see that there's some influence from React here. I don't know how many React guys are here. Just to, OK, not many. So this is, also, this is also an influence from React, because React takes this functional approach. So I can see that there's some sharing here between um, frameworks, which is interesting. I'm going to go with an overview of Angular. Uh, probably not, it's not in your most interest, but uh, just allow me. Uh, it's cool to show Angular in a, in a view conference, anyway. <laughs> I'll just leave the, the logo there for a moment. <laughs> the Angular core team will be like, yes, yes. We did it. <laughs> OK. So, Angular, I mean, as any other modern framework, works on the web. Then it has been improved. Performance using JavaScript has improved uh, incredibly in the last year. So you can also use it in mobile. Obviously, it works on desktop. The ecosystem is really, really great. You can see uh, a lot of uh, nice tooling. Uh, obviously, there's some. Um, packages in this ecosystem that are mainly JavaScript, so you can, uh, you can also try it out. Um, probably from this, from this list, I would tell you to, uh, to look into RxJS. I've seen there are some plugins, so you can use also uh, or play around with RxJS in your uh, view apps. Um, obviously, there's also you know, the tools for GraphQL and Apollo, and also the mobile with NativeScript and Ionic. OK. Performance. I will talk a little bit more, because it seems like every framework seems to think that they are the fastest framework. And this is something that happens with every single one. So I'm going to, I'm going to show some numbers, but this is something that Angular uh, people always do. Like, yeah, we are really fast. Yeah, sure. OK. Community. I mean, the Angular community is huge. If you see the numbers, this is in a meetup. Okay, it's just you know one um, index of this uh, popularity. But you can see that it's almost half a million members, and it's almost a thousand uh, meetups um, happening all over the world. Of course, at this point, uh, because Angular has been around since. Uh, 2009. I mean, this number is a little bit, you know, uh, we don't know how many of them are from Angular 1 or the other, the other versions. So let's cover a little bit of view. Um, probably I don't want to bore you because probably you know uh, very well. So the view story is more or less the same. We have view working on all of these environments. The ecosystem, I was expecting to find a smaller ecosystem, but actually it's quite, um, it's quite big. I found everything that I, I usually see in Angular, I can see it in Vue as well. So we have you know, state management, we have server-side rendering. Probably the server-side rendering is uh, much better. Uh, we also have um, Bux, as I was saying. GraphQL is up to date. I mean, there was the release of Apollo 2, and quickly after that, there was a view um, example showing uh, how that client works. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive that this will just improve. Performance, that's also something that the view community likes to uh, no, no, brag about, yeah, we are really fast. OK. We'll see some numbers. And um, the community is still in early stages. I mean, this is not, these are not small numbers. Uh, thinking about that this is probably the second view conference. So that's actually, that's, that's probably a, a huge number. So we have like 30,000 members already and almost 100 meetups. You can see that there's a lot of uh, support from Europe and US, and a little bit uh, spread um, all over South America and then Asia. 
In China, yes. So um, one thing, if you, I mean, I run two communities in London. One is Angular and the other one is uh, GraphQL. So if you like Vue, I would totally recommend you to start your Vue uh, meetup. And that's something that will be really uh, rewarding for you. Okay, so the tooling. Um, <laughs> I get some uh, feedback. Uh, okay, no, nothing. So this is um, this is uh, the CLI. I mean, everybody is using the CLI. This is something I think that the Ember people started, and uh, now it it seems like you know very very useful. Um, you also have dev tools. I think these dev tools look slightly better than the Angular ones. That's a, a good job. I can see there. Uh, I also want to point, I mean, in Angular, we are big fans of Visual Code um, and TypeScript. So this is a really good, I mean, if you want to talk about Vue to any Angular developer, mention this because this is very important. They will be like, oh, I can use my Visual Code there. Yeah. And I guess that, I mean, this was really useful for me because I, I had no previous experience and I wanted something to um, play online. And this helped me a lot. So having uh, tools like Code Sandbox, I mean, it's great for, you know, newcomers to the technology. And I think some people ignore that you need to put some tooling. Otherwise, a lot of people will try um, they won't be successful, and then they will move to another, to another framework. And yeah, that's also important. So you feel like really cool, like the captain, like the cat captain. That's more or less my impression. I was really able to develop anything that I wanted, and uh, probably the documentation was also really good. Okay, so I'm going to go for the to-do app, and this is <laughs> just for um, to save some time. And I did the similar talk yesterday, so I hope the guys that were he here yesterday want to leave now. <laughs> so, okay, so I built this to-do app, and um, I'm using uh, Beautify to get the material uh, filling. And then for the rest, I'm just using, you know, I created some components and I'm using just the, the seed from the view CLI. Nothing, nothing fancy. Just feel, you know, this is mesmerizing. This is uh, actually Marvin typing from the back. Okay, so you can see it's just a to-do, okay. So now I'm going to go through different stages. Um, so I'm going to now show how the bootstrap go, but then I'm going to show the other, the other bits that I, um, that I had to build with Vue. And I'm going to start with Angular. So maybe if you are not familiar, I'm going to explain a little bit more. So this is the bootstrap that you need to run an Angular application. First thing is just to make sure that you are running in production, and then Angular will, um, will just remove some checks um, for change detection, so it's a little bit lighter in production. There's also the bootstrap, so we start with the application module, that's the root module. We uh, have this abstraction that it's a kind of a, the context of um, uh, execution, just to give us some uh, lazy loading options, um, if you are familiar with this technology, it's, um, it makes sense, I guess. We have this um, uh, ng module um, that gives us all of the components that are defined globally. We also have the imports. These are all of the modules coming from the core and maybe some third parties. And then we have also the bootstrap, the entry point for um, our app. Then on this app, uh, we just move into the app component and we get into the actual DOM element that we are going to instantiate our app. Here is just some example of how this looks like. We are using uh, TypeScript, so we have always a class. The bootstrap in Vue seems like really, really uh, easy. So we just have the 
instantiation of view, and then we also have, of course, the DOM element that we are going to instantiate our app. So that's looking very, I mean, we don't have any ng modules, we just have these components, uh, map, and then just um, running into the, the main, the root component, in this case, the app. Um, we, we can then see the template, which is this single component file. Um, and then just, you know, I think that that should be okay, um, as far as I know. So some, some things to know from the uh, template syntax. So these are some uh, comparing the same feature, how it looks in Angular and how it looks in, in Vue. You will see that these are mainly doing the same, very easy to follow. I would say that the Vue syntax is very close to what Angular 1 uh, was. Uh, we change it a little bit on Angular 2 and, and later. We have lost some directives, so now we need to use binding if we want to use this show or height. Uh, so that's not now in the core. We need to use some other uh, mean, means for that. Then ng4, it looks like exactly the same, just a small change. Um, the um, binding with the model, the two-way binding, it looks like really strange for Angular. <laughs> That's what we call bananas in the box, because just to remember the order, we need to create a, a mnemonic to... <laughs> I mean, it looks so much, much easier to, to follow on, on view. Then we have events. I mean, this looks like very, very close, one to the other. Um, probably comparing these two, I can see that one is more like web. It feels more web. Uh, the Angular one is a little bit funky because you, you don't, I don't remember after 20 years of web, I don't remember this to see, to have seen this anywhere. So I would say that view looks a little bit um, more solid on the template. So when you start building the solution, you need to define your components. And this is uh, what React started with, um, you know, this um, component approach. So in Angular, we will have some element, like custom element, that will look like this to do at the top. And we are using these square brackets to do the binding. So we are passing the values uh, into the component by using this syntax. And then the, the component is using this, um, this metadata, um, using a decorator. And then we are using the selector. This is a CSS uh, selector. You can use any of the CSS selectors um, that you can also use in Vue. We have the template that's um, now using Beautify. And we have all these. Um, so the parentheses are bindings with events. The square brackets are bindings passing uh, data into the component or a property. We also have some other decorators to um, define what is um, coming inside the component. This is this input, and that will do the, the mapping for you. So after you initialize this component, you will get the value from the attribute, will get it into these um, properties in the component. So it's totally um, around MScript 6 classes. So now we can see how it works with um, view. Um, we have this um, nice uh, colon. I mean, that's um, you know one character less than these brackets that we use. And then we have the template. That's um, you know the native uh, template element. Uh, probably it's a little bit confusing using the beautify. These long names for the nodes is maybe not uh, so clear. But I'm using this um, input value. Um, just to bind the value. This would be more like a functional component, so it's only depending on the inputs. There's no um, mutations, there's no change of the state. And I'm using these uh, props. And it seems like Eduardo was happy with this implementation, so if you see any error, you can tell me later. Let's see now how we handle components. So when we create um, the part that it's adding a to-do. I will just trigger an event, and then uh, following this um, stateful and or container, and then stateless uh, components, just 
presentational components, I will just pass the event to the container so the container can manage the state. So following that approach, we do that the same. We do the same in, in Angular. We are just use these uh, parentheses to uh, capture the, the event. And we are using also that same approach with this key down enter. I'm just grabbing the event from the, um, uh, the material form field. Um, just because I'm using Material UI. No, no Material UI, that's React. I'm using Angular Material in this case. Then I'm using this hash to get a reference to that DOM element, so that from that point I can use this to do in, um, in my code. And then the component is again a class. Now I can show you the output. So in Angular, we have this input and output um, decorators. That's mapping the value now with an event emitter, very similar to what you use in, a, in view. And then we emit the value of the to-do. The parent container component will then handle that. In Vue, we have a very similar approach. Just to show you that it's, it's very close, the code one to the other. We use this V model to this dub, double binding. We have this key down enter. Um, it didn't work with the um, default. I had to use the native just because it's, um, it's a material, a beautify uh, text field. So it will bubble up the native uh, event, and then I would capture it. Um, that's when I. Um, when I trigger by uh, pressing the enter on the field, it will trigger this add function and then it will emit the value. So I can use it then on the parent container. And I'm using the double binding with this new to do coming from, from data. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, then I want to show you how we register components so we can use them in our um, uh, Angular application. That looks more or less like this. So you will see all the list of the components. This is the global um, registration. We don't have any local registration, so we need to define this in these ng modules. And then within that module, we will have access to all of the components. I can, I can see that in view, it's a little, it gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility. Um, I also like that you can use ECMAScript 6 imports without you know, um, the wrapper, the abstraction that we use in Angular. That's also quite nice, how you define the components that you use. And you can also do that at any level. Um, you don't need to define this uh, context like we do in Angular. And after this, this is more like a walk through um, some of the bits of the, the code and how it changes from Angular to Vue. I did. I tried to do some evaluation. So this is the, my evaluation. I also put some data together. Um, so one is progressive, the other one is opinionated. So in Angular, you will have a lot of um, uh, opinions around how to do things. Sometimes that's good because you don't need to think what's the best solution. You just use the one that the Angular core team is um, um, recommending. You can see that it's quite much more popular. I mean, Vue is almost three times as popular in GitHub which I don't know what could be a reason. <laughs> but the last bit is the bundle, the bundle size. But it's not all about bundle size. <laughs> or is it? We don't go to that. But I understand, yeah, it's quite massive. But let me, let me evaluate. So I evaluate with three stars, and also Angular. <laughs> what? What's going on? <laughs> Someone wake up and put this face, like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's not so easy. Let's look at some, uh, I need some data. So there's this website I recommend you. It's um, a guy that is really into benchmarks, and it's every three months is creating a new round. That's called, that's now the seven round. And I'm going to show you some data. I don't want to break any hearts here. But let me show you. So this is, the first column is Angular version five, no zone. That means that we disable zones. 
so we cannot integrate with third-party libraries. Okay, if you don't use that, you can. It's kind of a slim version, and then we use key. You know, when you have a ng4 like a, a long list. This is a test on a long list, like adding, removing uh, rows. So that's being um, indexed. So then the framework can do some calculations and just do a, a minimal update on the DOM. That's the same option for view using the latest version. And you can see the numbers. This is like 10,000 rows, like it's some silly number. I mean, I'm not saying that it's intelligent to do this kind of test, but um, you can see the results. So these are the results like raw data. And you can see that the difference um, in this case is lower is better. The smaller is better. So Angular in this benchmark is better than Vue. So something is wrong here. What's happening? Well, what is happening is that one thing that you can understand is obviously any benchmark is, uh, you know, is mis misleading. So don't believe it. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter. But you can see that one important thing is, regardless, there's some scenario that is a little bit worse. Um, the difference is really small. It's, it doesn't matter. I mean, you, who is doing an application that adds and removes 10,000 rows? You know, that's completely insane. But even when you stress these two frameworks, like almost to the extreme, they behave exactly the same. I mean, if, I, if you send this to your professor at the university, he will be like, this is the same. Yeah, I mean, what's, what's the problem? This is a, oh no, there's some problem here, but other than this, is the same. And that's exactly what I want to tell you. It doesn't matter. Don't believe the people that tell you, oh, this is, I mean, you can choose, of course, you can choose whatever you like. But there's no best. There's no best. OK. At least not in the performance. I mean, it could be better in other, in other um, parts. So conclusions. My, my feeling is it's really easy to implement I mean, anything that I wanted to implement with Vue. Usually, it took less code, and I could do it like really, really quick. So it's a nice developer uh, experience. It feels like web. I don't know. I've been doing web for a long time, and it feels like it. Oh, I, I knew things. I knew more things. Or I could use. I didn't have to remember bananas in the box or some strange thing. It was just. Oh, it's an element. It's just a, a web element. And um, it also remembered to Angular one. It was strange. And some ideas. Some ideas from React. So if you are using React or Angular, I mean, it's really easy to go to Vue or the other way. I mean, don't go back to Angular 1. That's not, <laughs> that's not, that's not what I mean. And uh, very good tooling. I mean, you have really nice tools. Documentation is, is, is excellent. If you want to know more, I'm going to recommend you some people. Probably it's just silly because you, <laughs> you already know them. <laughs> And they are all here, so, okay? That's, that's how I feel. Okay, thank you, thanks a lot.